we also have a lot of human beings in relationships that aren't questioning their own truth. Totally. Right? Because they think that they're right. Oh, yeah. And from yeah. that right, righteous place, it's creating all of this dissonance. And so we get to hard times because we're so locked into the idea that it should be like this. If it's not like this, yeah. right? And, and what's deeper than that is the grieving of the dream. Yeah, that's big. The grieving of the dream and the avoidance of what happened in childhood. Blessings and blessings, everybody. My name is Preston Smiles. I'm Alexi Panos. And we are the co-founders of Sanctuary, a community where spirituality and life coaching meet. And today we're going to be talking about how to deepen your relationship during hard times. Yeah, that's right. This is a juicy topic. Um, just seems like there's been a lot in the in the in the air lately with couples. Um, every couple friend that we have has been going through some sort of deepening, some sort of uh, challenge, and this includes us. You know, this year was the hardest year by far of our relationship. Um, we welcomed in our fourth baby. That was a surprise baby. Uh, we we moved into a new house. We moved uh, we moved states. We had a lot of change at, while we had a lot of change going on here. So it was an intense year, uh, but we're closer for it and um, more connected because of it. So we want to talk about that. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's start by just addressing that in our society, we've been taught that hard times is a bad thing for relationships. Yes. And... You know, I was thinking about this the other day because when it comes to manifestation, I know that the law of opposites is built into manifestation. So if I want to experience up, the universe has to give me a contextual field to understand down so that when up occurs, I know it's happening, right? If I want to experience left, the universe must give me a contextual field of right so that when left occurs, I know it's happening. And so with manifestation, I have no issues when it comes to... Uh, things not working in the way that I want them to as fast as I want them to. But when it comes to relationship, so many of us, self-included for so long, thought that when times get hard and things start to feel uh, not good and, and gooky between your, your partner, that that means you're not supposed to be together. Mm -hmm. That means that somehow this is wrong and that we've made a mistake and that we're not a good fit. And, you know, I got caught up in that uh, a year and a half ago. And, you know, it's been one of the biggest and most beautiful lessons ever to remember that the quote unquote hard times are exactly when those relationships count the most. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think in, in the good times, that's when people are like, oh, we're so good, you know, and things are which is great. You know, and this is in leadership too. People are like, I'm such a great leader. Things are going great. I'm making money. It's like, but who do you show up as in the hard times, right? Yes. Whether it's in business, love, or with money, any of the things. And what's coming to me right now is um, in thinking about the Tao, book of the Tao, Taoism, they talk about how you don't have to try for health, hmm. right? You don't have to try for health. Health just is. Joy just is. Love just is. Anything that is a barrier to that is exactly that, just a barrier to that. So you can think of it like a stream. Love is a stream. It's always flowing. Hmm. Any barriers, any hard times are these big rocks. Yes. And when we find a rock, that's a gift. Hmm. It's like, okay, we found this huge rock especially the big ones, because the big ones are holding up the stream of love. So if we find that big rock and we pull that rock out and we look at it, mm -hmm. now we're opening up the stream for deeper love. Yes. And that is, in my experience, what happened with us is we had to look at these big rocks yes. that were just barriers to our own hearts, yes. to our own willingness, to our own uh, deeper in intimacy. And when we looked at it, and that was hard, that mm -hmm. was hard work to look at those things. Yes. and be responsible, mm. <laughs> especially yes. when in partnership, we're like, you go first, yep. you do it. <laughs> yep. Yep. But looking at those rocks, we got to really say, okay, what's here? Where have I not been willing to go within myself yes. to let that flow of love flow? Yes. And how can I get out of my own way? Mm. 
Okay, so let's go super deep again. Um, recently, you know, uh, Alexi and I, we, we lead workshops. And one of our workshops, which is a nervous system and trauma-based workshop called uh, The Bridge Experience. And in this particular workshop, there was someone sharing, actually a group of women started to popcorn and share how hard it is for them to receive help, oh, yeah. how hard it is for them to allow or even open their feminine essence up to a man because they've been taught for a very long time that uh, to never depend on a man. Yeah. And there's this hyper idea about independence in the, 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 the female Western mind. Yeah. And what I wanna bring here to sort of ask you about and ping pong is, people will say, we're having a hard time and it's because my husband messed up, mm. right? It's because he, my boyfriend, uh, this is often what we hear, especially in self-development, it's always the dude's fault because they're not doing, they're not reading the books you're reading, right? Um, and they'll say it's it's his fault, right? And if they don't say it's his fault, the energy is there. The context is yes. there. Yes. Yeah. But we know, right, because we see it all the time, that women have just as much work to do. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're human, you have work to do, right? Yes. So, but here's the question. Yeah. Here's the question. So- Hard times happen, yeah. right? Somebody does something that is terrible, yeah. right? No justifying that. But what happens when we start to see that that was a reaction to a string of things that were also terrible? Um, yeah. That may not, in society's eyes, be as easy to catch. So an example would be, if, right, um, if somebody is doing their best to try to please another person or, or like show up for the relationship and that person constantly uh, sort of undermines them. Like I had a friend who, uh, you know, he, his wife came in and she was like, so you're just like not the kind of guy who takes out the trash, right? And it, that type of like energetic attack yeah. may seem like, oh, it's all she said was, you're not the kind of guy that takes out the trash. Well, that stacked up over four years yeah. could feel like a death by a thousand knives. Yeah. And then that guy does something at the very end that we as a society go, yo, that was messed up, right? He screams, he slams the door, right? That same guy has shared with me certain things, right? Actually, it's another guy that shared with me uh, things like, you know, she'll poke, 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 poke. And the moment I react, now we're talking about my reaction and not the poking. Mm. Yeah, so I, I get this. And I, I want to just, for, for sake of being able to hear it for right. any of our listeners out there, let's pull man, female away. Because the truth is, men are doing this and women are doing this. Mm -hmm. Everyone's doing this, but it looks different, right? Mm. So yes, the independent woman is a thing. It is a thing that we are taught. Don't depend on anybody. Don't do this. Don't do that. You got to have your own back so that you don't get hurt. Mm. And in that independence, we're essentially making the people in our lives losers because it's like, well, I don't need you. Uh, so you're basically here for when I do need you. And it better be good. It better meet my standard. And mm. if it doesn't, why the fuck are you here? Mm. Right? And it's not that we're saying that, but we're that's, that's the essence that's we're giving out. That's how it feels, out. for sure. <laughs> that is how it feels. And, and that's the truth. The truth is, is when we do it all ourselves, and this is me, so I can talk about this because this is my story of like, I've got it all. I don't need anybody's help. It's cool. I got it. I got it. Because in my mind, it's like, well, I want it done right. So let me do it, right? And so what that does is it creates a context of you can't do anything for me. So now you feel like you can't show up for me. Now you feel like you can't uh, do anything to please me. So now you're trying extra hard, mm -hmm. subtly to please me. Mm -hmm. But I'm not even available for it because I'm doing it all myself, which I'm getting resentful for. Yes. But I'm putting myself in that position and I'm putting you in that position. So just to speak to that first topic of the independent woman, the reason we have to dismantle that is because that is a fear-based strategy, number one, to be independent and have it all. We're human beings. We're relational beings. We need other people. Number two, asking for support actually promotes people in our lives to bigger roles. And it creates a sense of trust. Like, hey, 
I'm going to ask you for support because I believe you can do it. Mm. I believe that you can show up for me and I want you to be able to show up for me. Mm. That's giving and receivership 101, mm. right? So it creates a symbiosis in the relationship where you feel like you are valid and you get to be here and you're needed. And that feels so good for anybody, male or female. Now, speaking to the subtle death by a thousand knives, whether you're you're a man or woman or anything in between, it's important to note that we're all playing these subtle games, mm -hmm. right? So whether I'm judging that you're not doing anything right or you're not the type of person that takes out the trash or whatever that, that statement might be, the man also has judgments about how his woman's not, you know? my woman's not doing this, or why isn't she more like this, or I wish I had more of this. So let's take man and woman off and say we both play this game. Mm. We both play the game Who's of- Who's more vocal though? Women, for sure. But in a way, women wish that men were more vocal <laughs> because what happens is when the men in our lives are not vocal about this, we catch the buildup. Whenever you are vocal, we catch the fucking build up. We catch like the the years waiting list of all of those little tiny resentments in one moment. And it's like, boo. And that's why it feels okay. explosive sometimes. Touche. Um, you know true. what I'm saying? That's true. So I think most women would be like, yo, I'd rather hear, like give it to me like in small doses over the year mm. instead of one giant big dose because mm. it's easier to hear. Yes. So again, I think the real issue here is we have a lot of human beings that are not speaking their truth out of fear of not being loved. Yes, and I'll take that and 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 go right back into it. It's not even fully that as much as it is, we also have a lot of human beings in relationships that aren't questioning their own truth. Totally. Right? Because they think that they're right. Oh yeah. And from yeah. that right righteous place, it's creating all of this dissonance. And so we get to hard times because we're so locked into the idea that it should be like this. If it's not like this, yeah. Right. And and what's deeper than that is the grieving of the dream. Yeah, that's big. The grieving of the dream and the avoidance of what happened in childhood. Mm. So these two things are playing. I think those are heavy in the space, yeah. right? One, you know, Disney, right? This was supposed to be like the notebook. Once we <laughs> got together, like why are we not Ryan Goslinging <laughs> this whole thing right now? Right? Why is my man not Ryan Gosling and like waiting for me for ever? Correct, correct right? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then two, it's you know, a lot of us are products of divorce. Oh yeah, and. Um, well, it, it even erase that or products of people's who whose parents have stayed in marriages and there was no love. Yeah. Or there was just like disconnection or there was no affection. Like we didn't have a manual. There was very few people I would say that are like, wow, I really got to see what love was. Yep. You know? And I know we are working at that for yes. our kids to yes. give them an example. But it, the truth is hard times, you're right. Hard times, people get fixed in those hard times of like, I'm right. And until you acquiesce to my idea of rightness, mm -hmm. we've got nothing to talk about here. And I think this is where curiosity is a really powerful tool yes, yes. to just come in and go, you know what? Let me soften my heart a little bit. Mm. Let me remain open. What's here that I'm unwilling to see? Mm. Like what, even if my partner is full of shit right now, is there a shred of truth in there? That. that I'd be willing to take on and like just sit with. Where could they be true? Like playing that game, where could they be right? Mm. Is a really powerful thing. And again, you've got to ask yourself, like if there's that statement, do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? Mm -hmm. And I used to hate that statement because it's like, no, you got to stand up for yourself and da, da, da. But it's not even about being right. It's do I want to be in war mm. or do I want to be on the same team? Yes. Right? And if you and I are on the same team about this issue out here, well, now we're building more intimacy. Mm -hmm. Now we can go, oh, we got this issue. How do we want to work this? Well, what do you need, babe? Well, what do you need, babe? Okay, great. How can I support you in that? Yes. How can I support you in that? Now we're building team. Now we're building an energy of like, we got each other's backs, like us against the world. That feels so amazing. And I know when we've been at our worst, it's when we're at war. Yes. When we're both fighting for our way to be the way. And we're so right about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are just... And we're not willing to be curious. We're not willing to let go of the grip that this is the way. Yeah. Just to transition to how to deepen the love, right? Yeah. Some of it is, a lot of it is what we just said, but uh, I'll also take this angle, which is 
We deepen the love by deepening the love for ourselves. Yeah. By truly filling our own cup and allowing the overflow to be for our partners and for the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I know I've gotten in trouble many times in our relationship because I was I was hoping and wanting you to do that for me. Oh, same. Yeah, and, 100%. And uh, the resentment starts to build because the good boy people pleaser yeah. who didn't have needs as a child says, oh, I'll wash the dishes 12 more times. And then, <laughs> and then at that point is going to be the moment where she gives me all my needs. And the truth is, is that even if you did, it would still do me a disservice. Of course, because it's enabling, right? And and I think men and women, we we all do this. We enable bad behavior in each other because we're all playing this game. Hmm. We're playing the game of like, you do it for me. No, you do it for me mm. versus I got to do it for me. Mm. I got to take care of myself. I've got to take care of my needs. And then when I am self-resourced, I can show up for you, but you can also show up for me and it feels good mm. because at that point, it's non-transactional. Yes. If I'm doing anything in order to get something from you, that's a transaction and people can feel that. Truth. You know, and transactional love does not feel good. And that starts to build a whole series of resentments. The women I work with, that is the number one re reason that women shut down in sex because mm -hmm. they're like, it feels transactional. Mm -hmm. It feels like if I do this, then like I can get all the things I need. I have to have sex in order to get all my other needs met. And that doesn't feel good. Which, what's interesting about that is the dudes that I work with feel like the women are holding sex hostage, which also yes. feels transactional. Yes. And like, um, you know, I don't want anyone else to look at you, but I don't want to touch you. And there's this energy of like, well, F you. If, if you're going to hold it hostage, you're going to hold your love back until I jump through all these hoops. Yeah. And so. And here's the big thing about that is it's punishment on both sides, not just to the other person, but to yourself. Yes. Because as a man, it doesn't feel good to have sex with somebody who's like, I don't really want to be here. Mm -hmm. And as a woman, it doesn't feel good to not be in, in ravishment with your partner and to be like in that feeling of exchange sexually with your partner. Like mm -hmm. we're human, we want that, yes. we want that. But how we get it gets to change, yes. right? And I think, we talk a lot about context in our workshops, how context creates the content in your life and how we go about bringing our needs to our partner, mm. how we go about asking for what we desire is way more important than what we're actually asking for. Mm -hmm. You know, in our, our workshop this past weekend, we had someone who was talking about how she was coming to her partner for four years. I just want more affection. I just want more affection. I just want more affection. How was she asking for it though? Mm -hmm. Like, could her partner actually, number one, hear her? Or does she feel like she was being attacked? Number two, was her partner inspired to make the change? Based on results, no, because they're no longer together. But this is a really interesting thing that I know I've had to sit with is how do I go about asking you for mm -hmm. what I need? Mm -hmm. Because I can ask. There's a million ways I can ask. And there's a lot of ways I know I'm going to get resistance from you, mm -hmm. right? And everybody's different. So you got to learn your partner. But. but in learning you and learning how to talk to you, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I can get what I want. I just have to ask in a particular way mm -hmm. that creates inspiration from you to want to show up for me. That. Okay. We have reached sort of the end. And what we're going to do <laughs> is rapid fire some of the practical ways to deepen your relationship during hard times. I will go first, then hit it over to you. Okay. Uh, number one, take out a uh, photo book and talk about some of the best moments. And even if you catch yourself trying to, like you start the best moment and then you're like, but yeah, then we argued about X. Just <laughs> stop right there and go right back to what was it about this trip, this moment that opened your heart, mm. right? Just find ways to remember who you've been together because oftentimes the Velcro brain um, uh, uh, will, will pop in and we will stick to negativity and forget that there's been so much beauty in yeah. this relationship. We actually did that. Uh, we were having, a, again, a really challenging time and I think I was like, can I, can we look at this mm -hmm. and see like, it wasn't all bad, mm -hmm. you know? And we had, I mean, we've had so many good times, but doing that brought us back to like, oh yeah. Cause when you get in those moments, you're like, everything's terrible, mm -hmm. but it's not. So I love that. Um, 
I'll say this. Number one thing you get to do when there has been a breakdown, and and I'm going to give a visual here. Imagine that your building has collapsed. That building is your relationship. When that building has collapsed, you feel like, what? where am I? What do we do? There's nothing here. I don't know who I am anymore. Great. This is the moment that you get to celebrate because now that faulty foundation that was built off of, you know, hormones and trauma bonds and, and immaturity, truthfully, it's gone. It's gone. When we have the big collapses in relationship, which is what we had, we had a huge collapse. It, it was hard. It was a death, but it was also this open space to rebuild something new. And with open space, you can really go, okay, let's get intentional with each piece of this foundation. And before we build a high rise again, like we did really quickly before, let's take our time. Let's think about the materials that we're using. Let's think about the longevity of what we want to have here. Like, do we want to be on the 29th floor? Do mm-hmm. we want to have, you know, a more wide view of mm-hmm. the ocean? Mm-hmm. So when you've got this like clean slab, you've got a brand new space to work with. So while you are grieving the death of what the relationship was, celebrate that there is new life waiting to be born. That Third, I would say way to deepen the relationship would be to set up um, something that's going to occur six months from now that both of you can get excited about, something that's going to occur one month from now that both of you can get excited about, and something that's going to occur one week from now that both of you can get excited about. Oftentimes we need to have these things, these shared memories and these knowings that we're going to do something together and remember our partnership and our bond. Mm, I love that. Fourth way um, to deepen your relationship when you're in hard times is to take this as an opportunity to love yourself more. Again, where am I lying to myself? Where am I dropping myself? Where am I betraying myself? Uh, Where have I not had my own back? Where have I not even been aware of my own needs or desires? Start taking care of yourself now and really bolstering up the you that is going to re-enter this partnership. The biggest thing missing in partnership in hard times is our fullest us our fullest expression, our fullest truth. And I think when we do that work on ourselves, ultimately it just brings so much more magic to the relationship and it creates a brand new partner that we get to know. Sometimes for the first time, like I know for us, we have been getting to know each other again because we're both stepping deeper into um just more realness, more authenticity within ourselves. Not that we haven't been that before, but there's been that people pleaser in the way. So now it's now that that's out of the way, we can really get to know each other from this space. And that's exciting. Yes. And fifth and final way to deepen the relationship would be to have an acknowledgement practice that you do every night before you go to bed. So literally, stop, turn everything off, stand in front of each other, lay in front of each other, whatever, however you want to do it. And just start with, I want to acknowledge you for. It could be something from that day. It could be something from five years ago. It could be something from five minutes before that moment. But do at least three to four acknowledgements each of each other and leave it at that and then go to bed. Can I do a bonus one? Do it. Okay, because this one really helps us. Go and just be physically close with each other. Even if you're really mad at each other, like just go hug each other. You can have like the scowl on your face or whatever you need to do to make sure that your brain knows you're still mad. But just go like hug each other, touch each other, look each other in the eyes. Um, When we fight, we tend to avoid eye contact and avoid physical touch. And that is to dehumanize the other person. And when we dehumanize another person, it's it's easier to hurt them. And so just rehumanize each other, reconnect to each other, see each other, feel each other, even if it's in a small way, uh, because that will help kind of get you across that line to be a, a little bit nicer to your partner in those difficult moments. Boom. Beautiful souls. If you want or are desiring a community, a place to be held, a place to learn, a place to grow, a place to really like dig into this kind of work. We have one that is absolutely amazing. We believe it's the best in the world. It is called Sanctuary. If you want more information on that, uh, click 
the link in the show notes or in the bio or wherever this is, or go to www.thebridgemethod.org forward slash sanctuary. 